Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of Conquest State of Mind. I don't do tons of Conquest videos, but I like to give my suggestions at the beginning of each volume. This is Conquest Volume 11. Uh, we're going for Terran Malikos here, and this guy looks pretty sick. Uh, I kind of missed the ball when I was doing his roster review. He obviously goes with the Seer team. I was like, I don't know where he's going to go, but obviously just put him with Seer. I don't see him as a Lord Vader lifter or a replacement from all, but... I uh, could be wrong about that. So let's just get into general priorities, and then later I'll talk about my recommended squads for all those feats. All right, I'll try to go through through these kind of quick, and if you've already seen one of these videos from me before, you can probably skip a lot of this. Uh, but just the priorities for your first run through is winning is first priority. Three starring a node is your main goal. You'll have plenty of time for sector feats and global feats as you go through and also do the Datacron nodes. Uh, rotate your Galactic Legends and best teams. Don't let them sit at 100% because if your main goal is to win the node and three star not drop, just use those best teams. Keep them fresh. Cycle through. Don't let them get below like 70% stamina. Start using someone else. Uh, work on sector feats if win is assured. Otherwise, just wait until the data card nodes to do those. And yes, we have data card nodes simming now. So you might want to do a try to squeeze in a few more feats in your first run through. Um, as long as you can afford not um, uh, not getting three stars every node, um, yeah, but still try to win the nodes, that's your first priority. Same thing for global feats. Um, the global feats don't look too bad, honestly, except for like Phoenix might be difficult for newer players uh, and people like me that can't get Captain Rex up and running super fast. Uh, but work on those on the Datacron feats, uh, Datacron nodes foremost, uh, but try to squeeze them in if you know you're gonna win. I don't replay nodes you have cleared, except bonus. Uh, I am tempted to hit a node that I one-starred, uh, but just wait and come back later. You might not even need it. Uh, this is a little bit different this time. I normally say ignore the southern challenge path. Uh, <laughs> Parth. I'll just leave that. Um, the southern challenge path is typically not important because you only get consumables, but there is that feat now where you need kills along the golden path. They're trying to force you onto that, so I don't know how long it'll take to get all those kills. But um, don't worry if there's something super hard on the southern path, just avoid it. Top one is valuable because that's where you get the data discs. And then avoid data disc swapping if you can. I mean, try to equip data discs for the long run. It's not going to kill you if you equip a data disc and then take it off midway. Uh, but it's just more efficient for like a free player to try to only equip the ones you're going to stick with. Now we got some general conquest priorities. Uh, identify early on which feats you want to skip. For me, it's the Jedi Knight Calcestis one in Sector 5. I just literally can't do it. Um, there's not too many bad ones. I mean, maybe you want to skip Phoenix, uh, but I'm going to try to do Phoenix. And if you don't have Malgus or something, things like that are, thing, are feats you're going to have to skip. So identify that early. Have a variety of data disks you want. I'm going to talk about some recommendations on the next uh, part of this presentation. Uh, but you might not always get what you want. I have gone plenty of times without getting Amplify Agony uh, and not getting all the Zealous Ambition I want, so I have a backup plan. Uh, we already talked about this. Farm Sector and Global Feats on the bonus nodes for Datacrons, uh, but work on the 40 Battle Feats earlier. Uh, if you do just three or four battles a day, you're going to get those easily. Uh, so the ones with winning with Malgus, just try to squeeze a few in each day. Um, I recommend only doing the 50 crystal refreshes, not 100s. Uh, even I'm going to do that. I am competitive for Datacrons, but I'm probably not going to do the 100s this time around. I need to save those crystals for Leviathan refreshes and stuff like that. And don't buy the Conquest Plus Pass. Um, I don't think this is worth it at all. The Conquest Pass is very valuable as far as the resources it gives, uh, but it doesn't really help you get through Conquest. And then the, the benefits from the Conquest Plus Pass are just well not worth it. Uh, it's 30 bucks, and yes, your stamina speeds up, and you can freely swap data disks, but that's just not worth it at all. And the way I think about data disks is you want to try to break them up into categories and try to get some for those categories. Um, I don't have specific sets that I name, I'm like, oh, this is the best set. Um, but you want some good damage ones and initiative. I think those are the most important. And then survivability or durability. They're nice, but we don't have, like, if we can trust the list that CG put out of what the data disks are, which last time we couldn't, uh, they left all the old ones in, um, we're not seeing um, entrenched, and that's the most valuable here. Uh, we might have, we should have voluntary vanguard and defensive formation, but they're not as good as um, entrenched at all. 
And even defensive formation isn't as good as critical formation. For that one, you get like 12% tops from a crit covering protection. So the durability are kind of taking a back seat. Um, and it says right now we're not going to get um, a Zealous Ambition. Maybe it's a mistake again and we do have it. But the main damage uh, data discs you want to go for are absolutely Amplify Agony. This is the best one in the game. If you see it, pick it up immediately. Don't even think about it. Just go get it. Um, so get a couple of those maybe, but just having one works. That combined with the Volatile Accelerator is the best combination in the game. And that costs five dots, but is well worth it. Um, just no matter who you have, they're going to start killing people because all that damage from the debuffs melts people. Um, if you can't get Amplify Agony, uh, some other good offensive data discs are Blindside, Exposes for Attacking out of Turn. Uh, those add up a lot. There's a lot of out of turn attacks in the game, so you can get your damage that way. And then Ruthless Offense, since it's one dot, I, I pretty much throw it in every time if I see it. Uh, you're your offense stacks a crazy amount when any because anyone uh, people go below 100% health a lot so it really stacks and it kind of adds with like if you have zealous ambition too you're really skyrocketing and cost of commissions is like I don't use this because it gets in the way of getting the kills for the feats on your own uh, but if you're having trouble with damage that's a good way to make sure you're getting a lot of damage out there and then initiative, really the only thing um, is Ruthless Swiftness. Definitely pick up two or three of these. They're amazing. Like it turns every team into a Terminator train team, which really helps combine with damage. You basically need to just get to your first turns. And there's a lot of teams that start out with a first turn uh, and then you're gonna run the table with that team. And now time for the overview of the feats. And I'm tiny up in the corner because uh, this is taking up a lot of space. Uh, kudos, uh, thanks to the Swiggy event server with these data mine feats. Uh, they announced them uh, in the forums, but it's a much easier format to look at them in all in one page. I'm gonna start with global feats. And in general, I don't think these feats are bad for like uh, long time players or people that were at least able to get Malgus in his conquest. These feats are great. Uh, there's none that are super annoying, like Tuscans. I hated, and uh, the Night Sisters. Yeah, were kind of difficult. Uh, for newer players, it's gonna be hard, just no matter what, just because Ma if you don't have Malgus, you're gonna kind of struggle. Uh, so global feats that got rid of the 500 kills flat, which was the biggest gimme in the whole in the whole world for conquest. And they replaced it with defeat at least 250 enemies on the Golden Challenge path. Uh, so that gives you an incentive even to take that bottom path. On the top path, you wanted to do that anyway to increase your choices for data discs. Um, but just, I don't know how long it's going to take, but you might need to go out of your way for that. Um, these two 40 win feats are the best I've ever seen, honestly, because there's a clone squad I use every time, even when it's not for any feat, just because I love it. And I'll show you that. That's going to be super easy. Um, and it's not just, it's not pure Bad Batch or 501, it's a mix. And then Malchus surviving, he's like the tankiest non-galactic legend in the game. He's even more tanky than some galactic legends. So having him survive, if you have him, super easy. Um, the 20 wins with Phoenix, it's kind of interesting that they really forced your hand. They named these specific characters. You need to use these characters. I'm okay with it because I have Ezra and Hera at Relics and then Kanan's Gear 12 Chopper. Um, they might be the best combo anyway. I do like Zeb for his dazes and stuns, but we'll have to make it work with this. I mean, uh, we'll have to see what teams they are specifically good on, uh, especially Datacron mode, which I don't know yet. Um, the B100 enemies with Cal Kestis, Sir Junda, or Jedi Knight Cal, same as last time, just add a Jedi Knight Cal to it. You can do this with, um, if you have a Seer team, then great. Uh, if not, you can use Jedi Master Luke to call Cal to assist, even though he's not a Jedi. And I didn't realize that last time I did a Conquest video. Um, and then they have the Data Discs ones and the Wookiee Feet. Uh, that one's going to be a little annoying, but because Tarful is going to be weak for me, he's not seven stars. Uh, but his leadership should help. I might That might not be a three-star team, so I might just be doing that on Datacron nodes. Uh, but I do have some good Wookiees relic up, and a lot of people probably do too. And then the sector feats, um, one trend I see is there's a lot of conquest characters required to survive in boss nodes, which is kind of interesting. Uh, I mean, Cal Kestis, Giant Knight Cal, isn't a conquest character, uh, but this conquest is requiring a lot of different conquest characters in Malgus, Trench, Ben Solo. Um, a lot of these are repeats that we see all the time. Kills with droids, no tanks, defense up, ability block, not bad. 
Um, all these are repeats as well, so I have good teams for that, and it's pretty simple. We have returned is new, uh, so sector three, you're definitely gonna wanna do a lot of those Malgus battles um, and cycle through, just try to preserve their stamina for it though. Uh, full squads of Galactic Republic, I don't think we've seen that in a while, but that's really generous because it's one of the best squads in the game. Geonosian kills might be difficult because uh, a full Geo squad might not be great. Uh, I have uh, kind of a hybrid squad that we might want to look at for that. Uh, these are all the same that we've had before. Uh, so I'll go over my comps mainly to talk about these. And then Sector 5, uh, defeat 50 characters with Phoenix units. Sector 5 is kind of tough for that. I'm probably going to be using Giant Master Luke to call Ezra to assist or Kanan or something, but probably Ezra. Um, and just, yeah, all these all these are repeats, so there's not too much you have to stretch your brain for if you've been doing other conquests, other recent conquests. Uh, but if you haven't, I have plenty of squads to recommend for you. And now to look at some squads. I hope that you are listening while I talk about them to explain them, but I've also named them trying to describe them as much as I can. Uh, with the little space you have. Uh, G just means it's app applicable to global feats, and then I have S, whatever sector it's applicable for, and then kind of describe it. Uh, so this is just the standard Sith Empire team. This is an amazing team. Um, I, you shouldn't be too worried about getting that global feat. It's also good for Sector 3 with the We Have Returned. Uh, so nothing too uh, difficult there. And this is the clone team I was talking about. This is good for the global feats with clones, Sector 2, with uh, no attackers in your squad, Sector 3 with Galactic Republic wins. And it's a Rex lead, which Rex lead is awesome for conquest, literally so good, because uh, you're getting turn meter when anyone's getting hit, uh, pretty much guaranteeing you're going to get a turn at some point. And it's all support, so it did work well with Zealous Ambition, probably not gonna have that, but it works amazing with Amplify Agony as well. Uh, you're going to get a turn, Rex is going to get turn meter out, and then Echo and Tech take it away, dazing, healing immunity, stunning everyone. And then Echo kind of deals the finishing blow. So it is a really quick win if you have the Amplify Agony set up. Super great, just use it every day, you'll get that clone's feat uh, very easily. And sometimes Fives does get a sacrifice, but most of the time it's a clean 3-star win. Of course, we have the forced win, forced uh, Phoenix squad. This is the lineup you need to use. I might take these guys to gear 13. I don't know. Um, I'm kind of neatly tied up on a lot of my projects right now. Uh, but this is also good for Sector 2 with the Rebel Fighters. Um, but it's only Rex is a Rebel Fighter. So if you do get kills with him in Sector 2, that's going to help you out. And of course, Sector 5, Phoenix as where you're getting there. Um, I had another Luke team. Uh, dang it. Uh, I need to add another squad. We also got this team that I tried. I had to shove a lot of things into the title for. Uh, this is the global feat for Cal Kestis. Luke does not need a Jedi to call to assist, which I didn't realize. Um, you uh, just call target other light side ally to assist. So it doesn't have to be Jedi. I always thought it was Jedi, but you can call Cal Kestis to assist, get the kills with him. Uh, it's also good in Sector 1 because you can get a lot of ability block. That's JML and Old Ben coming in. A couple AoEs and then calling Bastila to assist when they're not ready to be killed. You're going to get ability block there. And then Hoda is great for calling assists and Master's Training, but I only put Master's Training on Cal. Uh, it's also good for Sector 2 and 5 Foresight, but I have different comps I'll show you. Um, I have a Sector 2 a comp in particular. Um, but it's also good for evasion down in Sector 4. So, Jedi Master Luke, super valuable in Conquest, and there's a couple comps I'll show you for him. And then for the Wookiees, I mean, this is only for the global feed. There's no other, like, uh, underlying Sector feeds. I mean, you can get some droid kills with Droopy and Chewie, but you really want to be careful if you don't have, like, a Relic Tarful, which is a lot of people. Um, Zalvar is a great addition here, but I don't have him at Relics. I have the Smuggler Chewy at Relics for uh, Ray, I think. Um, but I'm probably going to put some gear on Tarful and then just use him as the leader. Hopefully they do well and can survive, but I feel like this isn't a great first run-through team uh, since you have a weak character in there. Uh, moving to the just Sector 1 feats now, I already kind of talked about all the global feats. There's plenty of droid teams, um, starting with Sortie. This is a droid team with no tanks. IG-11 kind of acts like a tank, which is very nice. 
because uh, you need to wi get wins without tanks, but G act or it acts as a tank anyway, so that's pretty great. Uh, this is just more droid kills, General Grievous and uh, Dr. Aphra. Uh, the Dr. Aphra team doesn't have tanks, which is very nice, so that's great in Sector 1. Uh, General Grievous, I'd probably go to third in that sector, but you do need a lot of droid kills. Uh, but you can farm those on the data ground node if you need to. Uh, also, Sector 1, a few more. Uh, Jedi Master Kenobi, this team is going to be so valuable, like, everywhere. Uh, I have it listed for, like, every sector. Um, it's also good for Sector 3, even though I didn't list that there. It's literally every sector. In Sector 1, you can get the defense up. I prefer this over the Clone Wars Chewie lead. Just sacrifice everyone because you're not going to win that way. It wastes a battle, and you can just get defense up over a few battles um, with uh, Barris Offy using her heal, and then Yoda can spread it. And then um, when you're moving into the zone where you need armor shred, which is Sector 4, you can kind of get rid of Yoda, uh, maybe Barris, and throw a Kitty Mundi in there uh, to get those armor shreds. In obviously Sector 3, it's all Collector Republic. And then Sector 5, you can get a lot of foresight, and it's also pretty easy to win without dropping units. So super valuable comp uh, for the, this whole conquest. And if you didn't have enough droids and no tank lineups, uh, the CLS team is pretty great for that. The only, you would have to get kills with Chewie, but it's just a pretty safe team to get wins. Uh, so classic there. And of course, Inquisitors. I do have Reva now, uh, but I think it's less common. People will have Reva. A lot of people, you should be working on Inquisitors, uh, but if you don't have Grand Inquisitor or Reva, just use Fifth Brother lead. Uh, they're good with Amplify Agony, and Zealous Ambition can help Fifth Brother and Seventh Sister a lot. Seventh Sith Sister especially hits like crazy. Uh, but this is going to be applicable in almost every zone. Um, actually, literally every single one, because you can get Ability Block with Grand Inquisitor in Sector 1. Um, in Sector 2, you need tons of Purge, so that's their thing. You have to use them. In Sector 3, um, you can get some Stagger. Uh, well, so I didn't list Sector 3. I think you can get some Stagger somewhere from uh, Eighth Brother, maybe. Uh, but their kits are kind of loaded, I kind of forget. Uh, sector 4, you need the Inquisitor wins, so that's one thing. You can also get an Armor Shred here and there if they have enough Purge stacks uh, with Eighth Brother. Uh, and if you're using Reva, that's going to be pretty easy to do. And then Sector 5, uh, you need to inflict Blind, and 8th Brother can inflict Blind. So, super valuable team across the board. Uh, and then Sector 2, this is one of those other Jedi Master loot comps. You're going to get 3 out of 4 feats just for this team, so use as much as you can. Uh, the kills with Rebel Fighters, you just try to get all the kills with Kalak Tarn, calling him to assist. So it's pretty smooth. Uh, this team, it has attackers, um, so with Kalkatarn, it's actually not three feet, so I messed that up. Um, if you want it to be three feet, so you can actually use just any light side character. You can use like Admiral, uh, not Admiral Rest, just any rebel fighter in this slot, honestly, and then it would be a three feet team. Um, and you also gain a lot of foresight from Hermit Yoda and Grandmaster Yoda, so you're knocking that out pretty fast. Then Mon Mothma team. Um, I set this up without Kyle Katarn, because if you do have Amplify Agony, it's going to be really easy. If you don't, uh, probably wouldn't utilize this team at all. But Scarecrow Pathfinder, I like him and Cardoon just for extra security to get those three-star wins. Uh, moving on to some Sector 3 specifics. Uh, we already have the Malgus team for We Have Returned. Uh, but Geonosians, what I'm talking about is, like, it might be hard for a Geonosian team to win on its own, just because they get kind of flimsy in Conquest. If you start getting turns and you have Ruthless Swiftness and Amplify Agony, you're going to be golden. Um, otherwise, you might want to try Trench with Nuke Gun Ray and Watt. Those are the characters uh, that are going to be really supportive. Prop them up but not steal the kills. And have just GBA and Spy. And they're going to be attacking on a turn a lot. Spy can do her big hit and GBA can do his A-Wave. So that might help out a lot. And Watt can put Weapon Tech on Spy or Brute Alpha just to get them more turns. And also Sector 3, Stagger is probably one of the more annoying feats. Uh, I think Stark is great for that. Um, Bastille Shan Fallen also can get some in Sector 3, uh, but that's really slow. What I like to use this team for is Sector 3 and Sector 4. This is Imperial Trooper kills, but also trying to make sure you win. And Lord Bear is there uh, to pretty much protect everybody. Just get out, 
fast and put a daze out there, which really helps for a lot of teams. Uh, and then he can't have his turn meter manipulated. So Veer's lead is only giving the turn meter to the Imperial Trooper units. So after Lord Veer gets his first turn, he pretty much doesn't get a second, uh, which is great. He's not stealing the kills. Moff Gideon's there to help nerf the enemy damage. Uh, Piet does great damage. Um, and obviously you need him for the Emperor's Trap. But Stark, you just want to get some staggers out with him. If you don't have Lord Vader, and then plenty of people don't, I think Aiden is actually way better in Conquest than uh, just a Veer's lead team uh, because she gets to go first. And if you have a Ruth of Swiftness and Ample of Agony, she pokes through so fast. And then you get your turn meter up and running really well. It's just a well oiled machine. I loved this team back when I had to farm data cron nodes. Even when I wasn't getting feats, it was one of my go to that I just put it on auto. Uh, so Colonel Stark, you use him in this lineup too and get some staggers there. Um, is like, if you just farm the Datacron node on Sector 3 a few times, you can get that stagger pretty easily there too. Um, but Imperial Trooper kills, I think way easier with Aiden than with General Fuse. We're moving on to Sector 5 now, and it's a bit more challenging, um, but you can get your Phoenix kills with Ezra under Jedi Master Luke. I find that way easier than um, like a Gear 11 Rex in Sector 5. Yeah, he's great, and if you get out first, uh, it's going to do well, uh, but in Conquest, all the units are beefed up, sped up, so it might not be the best. And then also, I don't know if this is a typo, but Foresight is also a feat in Sector 5, uh, so the Yodas are great for that. Shakti's here because she calls him to assist too, and she can heal up and doesn't do a ton of damage on her own. Yoda, once you get the Foresight feat, you want to replace it probably with like Jolie or something, just for added security and no extra damage. Uh, and for the blind feed, you can use just a standard CLS team, but what I find the most, the easiest is to use this lineup. Uh, it's Ray, if you have her, not everyone does. And 3PO and Chewie, you, with a Watt, you give the weapon tech to 3PO and Chewie, so he goes uh, early and often. Uh, and then you get him to three stacks of translation with C3PO, keep reducing his cooldowns, put the tank tech on Kenobi and the uh, med pack on Ray. Honestly, the med pack on Ray is probably the main priority, so that way she can all just spam her lifeblood move the whole time and never do any damage. Because you want to uh, stall to keep the enemy alive, so that's why it's no amplify agony for this to work. If you want to just take it off for a match, um, you I knock this out usually in one or two battles, uh, so that's great for the blind, which is otherwise kind of hard to inflict. And that's most of the just uh, section feats in order, but here's some other substitute teams if you do need them. Uh, if you don't have JMK, this is just a classic Padme lineup. Um, you can use Yoda as the fifth or C-3PO, but this team works very well. Um, it scales really well with the Conquest data disks, and you can get a lot of those Foresight feeds, Collect Republic kills, and it's just a good team all around. Also, the Maul team is ridiculously overpowered in Conquest, so that's why I just put it here as good in general. Um, but if you really need to just get down to bare bones, just have him, Candorous, and Watt, and you can carry any two uh, Gear 1 Level 1 characters as long as you have Amplify Agony, um, uh, uh, Volatile Accelerator combo. They just melt the whole team. You give... Uh, any tech, you can just put it in and put it on auto. You just give any tech with tech with Watt. He gives it to someone. Maul's going to get his turn. Then Candorous is going to go. And then you just wipe them all out. And then you have two really weak characters surviving. Uh, so for Saul and Tarful, there's some feats where they need to survive. This is what I'm going to use for that. For sure. Uh, then my go-to Hokey Religions team is this Dash, Han, and Chewie. Uh, CLS kind of always feels like it's a Hoku religion team until I remember CLS is even though he's not a Jedi that's still he's still disqualified as a Nufu uh, but this team works great um, Dash does tons of damage because he hits three times if you have Zealous Ambition or Amplify Agony he's just an amazing team and IG-11 Quill just helps survive and get stuff out and lastly not everyone has Jabba uh, but I got this tip from Xerath on the during one of the Gambit podcasts I just used, I put Greedo as the fifth on a Java team because that's the uh, prestigious feat I'm working on right now. They just gave me the Boba one. Uh, and you have to get 500 payouts a lot of times with, um, uh, what is it, uh, Bounty Hunters. So if you're going through, just throw Greedo in there and you can get a contract off under Java and make some progress on that.
And one last minute addition, uh, this team works well as long as you have Amplify Agony to win. Um, Caustic Emissions is actually pretty good for boss fleet, but just some more armor shred under Fennec Shan. There's not really any Scoundrel or Bounty Hunter feats, uh, but in Sector 4 where you need the armor shred, if you don't have all uh, Caddy Moondi and General Skywalker, uh, Fennec is great for that. Uh, she can throw out armor shreds like candy as long as the other team stays alive. So that is my last squad recommendation for today. I hope these squads and this advice helps you get to this shirtless wonder as fast as you possibly can. I definitely want to unlock him uh, right away. I've been more excited about him than any character since Malgus probably. He looks so sick. Um, just a great kit and online force user tag is becoming one of the most valuable tags in the game. Uh, so let me know what you think guys. Are you going to get him first? Uh, let me know what squads you like to use. And don't forget to sub if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and see you later.